In this section, we'll talk about staring spell seizures. A typical sort of story that I get for staring spell seizures usually starts with teachers. This will be where the teachers will report to parents, you know, I don't know exactly what's happening with your son. I wonder if maybe they have ADHD because they're always staring off. They seem unresponsive. I'll sometimes say their name two or three times. It seems like they're thinking very hard or they're in their own world and then they finally respond as if nothing had happened. When I hear that sort of story, it makes me wonder, is this a sort of staring spell seizure? Well, there's two broad categories or general types of staring spell seizures. The first is the generalized seizure, called an absence seizure. The second sort of staring spell seizure is a complex partial seizure. Now, if you remember, an absence seizure is a generalized seizure, abnormal electrical activity involving the whole outer part of the brain, where a complex partial seizure is usually just involving one part of the brain, if it's a staring spell seizure, sometimes we'll wonder if it comes from the temporal lobe. There's some ways to differentiate between the two sort of staring spell seizures. Or first, let me describe the way to differentiate between the seizure itself and just a behavioral spell. There's two tips I give families in differentiating between behavioral spells, like daydreaming or something that might go along with ADHD, and seizures. The first is, is there any behavior arrest? That's where there's a sudden stop in activity. It may stop a child mid-sentence um, while they're walking, um, walking upstairs, doing some sort of activity, hopefully not riding a bike or swimming, but a sudden interruption to their activity, call that behavior arrest. That's suspicious for a seizure. is less likely to occur with something behavioral like daydreaming or some sort of ADHD-like spell. A second way to differentiate seizures, is this a seizure or is this something behavioral like daydreaming, is arousability. And that is, can you get the child out of the spell by calling their name or preferably a shake on the shoulder, touch on the cheek, or even a very loud clap in the face? So the two things that you look for to help differentiate, is this really just daydreaming like the teacher thinks it is? Uh, or is this a seizure? The behavior arrest, stopping activity, uh, and arousability. Once you figure out that these things are seizures, the next important step is uh, determining if they're absence, that sort of generalized seizure, complex partial seizures, which is a focal sort of seizure. The first clue to these things being abs uh, uh, complex partial seizures is the presence of an aura. For absence seizures, the generalized type, you usually don't feel them coming on. Sudden loss of consciousness uh, without realizing uh, any sort of feeling beforehand, where with a complex partial seizure, you may have that aura, an unusual feeling, unusual sensation, sense of impending doom, rising up feeling in the abdomen, maybe tingling in the back of the tongue. The aura is a good tip off that the seizure is a complex partial seizure. The duration. We know absent seizures, this sort of generalized seizure, tends to be short. Usually less than 10 seconds, almost always less than 30 seconds, although you can have a prolonged absent seizure. It can go on for a very long time, called absent status epilepticus. But generally, Absence seizures are shorter than complex partial seizures, which are usually around a minute to as long as three minutes long. The automatism or movements during the seizure itself, more common with complex partial seizures, less likely to have unusual movements during an absence seizure. If you do have an unusual movement during an absence seizure, it's uh, usually a lip smacking, maybe some unusual movements with the hands, eye fluttering, uh, or unusual eye movements, and often it's a continuation of the pre activity or what happens before you have the seizure. The presence of a post state or what happens when the seizure is over is another way to differentiate between absence seizures and complex partial seizures. When an absence seizure ends, usually no residual neurologic problems. There's nothing that happens afterwards. The child isn't, isn't sleepy or confused. Um, and with a complex partial seizure, there's usually a postictal state, the sleepiness, confusion, um, headache, vomiting, things that typically go along after a, a, a seizure are more common with complex partial seizures and not with absence seizures. In fact, with absence seizures, there's occasionally a very interesting, smooth continuance of the pre activity. This is where a child might be um, um, uh, walking and have their seizure, and when the seizure's over, they may continue walking. If they left off at a point in a sentence, maybe even will continue the sentence as if they had never had a seizure. A very interesting, smooth continuance of the pre activity. Or there might be a, a reset. That's where um, they have their seizure, and then they'll, 
they'll have to realize what they were doing or what was going on and restart the activity. Some other differences is uh, with absence seizures, uh, it tends to be a early childhood uh, onset and, and, and actually absence seizures tend to resolve by puberty and, 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 and very frequently resolve by adulthood. So any child who comes in, say less than three or four years old, uh, it's very unlikely they would be absent seizures, more likely complex partial seizures. And same for a teenager to come in with staring spells, it's less likely to be something like absent seizures. Once we figure out that they are seizures and do diagnostic testing, the EEG is another way to help differentiate between the two. Remember, uh, absent seizures being a generalized sort of seizure, we'll see generalized discharge, usually a very characteristic um, basic neurology uh, EEG change of having what we call three hertz spike and wave discharges where complex or uh, focal seizures, uh, maybe instead of complex part, a focal sort of epilepsy with complex partial seizures, we'd see more focal abnormal um, um, discharges on an EEG. As part of your study guide, I've included an article which I wrote comparing the two sorts of staring spell seizures.